Hey, sorry for the minor interruption, but I'm getting you guys back on board here. We were just visiting with Lucy Gray, uh, Lori Grace out of Trust Vote, and I'm going to tune right back in to Lucy Riley. Here you go. All right, so thanks, folks. We appreciate it. So when we um, were last with you, um, before we had a little minor uh, technical difficulties there, Lori Grace was telling us about her seminal moment that brought her into the election integrity movement. Um, she'd been sharing um, with us a number um, of instances where she found um, irregularities in the election of 2000 and um, subsequently um, was introduced to folks in the election integrity movement um, that led her to where she is now. So Lori, thanks so much and thank you for um, I just wanted to add right back something in. before mm -hmm. I got cut off. Um, so when I discovered this about our country that, uh, that a presidential election could be manipulated, I just as I said, felt a deep sense of, of sinking concern. And uh, I've stayed with this whole movement uh, all the way from 2003 to 2016. And what I'm doing right now by connecting with your organization is I want to really encourage you to take a stand, to step forward, to take in the knowledge that you need to take to listen to the experts and you can become a part of the change the change to create a democracy to to create an election we can trust and i want to say to all of those of you who cared about bernie if the if the country that bernie envisioned the political system that he envisioned is going to happen we must take the votes out of large 1% style corporations and we got to bring it back to you the people to us the people and and uh, and help our country really represent the will of the people and, and you know I uh, stay with this it might be a little complicated at times I knew nothing about computers when I first got involved but um, you will feel really good each time you can contribute to making our elections more safe and more trustworthy. Lori, thank you so much. So folks, we want to um, remind you uh, this weekend we are having an election integrity conference in Richmond, California called Take Back the Vote. So from 9.30 registration, we will get started at 10 a.m going through 4 p.m. both Saturday and Sunday. This is going to be in Richmond, California, again at Grace Lutheran Church, which is on Barrett Avenue. You can park in the Civic City Center parking lot. And if you will look at the header for our live stream, our first live stream, you will see an eventbrite Dot com link that will take you to uh, uh, the link that you can buy a ticket. We would love for you to join us this weekend if you're living in the Bay Area. No one will be turned away for inability to pay. What We know that Bernie supporters are working two jobs to keep the lights on. We know that what got you involved in this election was you have suffered living paycheck to paycheck. You may have suffered um, as a single mother watching two teenage boys grow up to fall into the same cycle of poverty that you're in. We want to invite you to stay engaged in these live streams. We're here to educate you. We want to agitate you to act. We want to get you to demonstrate with your election integrity activist in your area. We want to connect you um, to a nationwide network of people that are ready to go and fight for legislation to fight to change the laws in your state. We are fighting for transparency, all right? So the last uh, leg of that is, so we've got educate, agitate, demonstrate, and legislate, because that's where it all changes, folks. So we're gonna talk to all of our, um, our um, godmothers and godfathers in this movement, folks. These are the folks that have, these, these um, activists and advocates have set the ball in motion for us. All we have to do is follow suit. So we've got some really exciting information about ballot images. And um, so John, can you start us off talking about what that is gonna look like um, in your state? Well, in my state, uh, but first I wanna thank Lori 
for planting the seeds that came back to us 10 years later. You know, these ballot images, for first off, we're voting in a black box, folk. And what we need is the box to become transparent. We need elections that are trackable and publicly verifiable. When these ballot images uh, are created, they become a public record and they belong to the people. They are anonymous. And we, the people, deserve the ability to verify elections because truly elections are not any good unless they are publicly verifiable. And you know, the thing that I've learned since I discovered our situation in Arizona, and we work to build this system, uh, and, and you know, and because of the work that was done previously on this by Laurie and Mitch uh, Trachtenberg and others, and then Larry Moore, ESNS, a huge corporation, wanted to stay competitive. Mm -hmm. And to stay competitive is to keep up with the technology. So they went ahead, uh, built the system, and they built the system four or five years ago. When they put the system out there, guess what? These election directors didn't want to buy it. Mm. They didn't want a system that had ballot images because they knew. Well, you know, when you pass uh, the EAC and you certify equipment, that doesn't happen overnight. It takes a couple of years and a lot of money. So what did they do? They took it off their literature. I have brochures that are four years old that say, hey, new technology, ballot images, and this and that. They stopped putting it on there. Wow. And we knew about it because of uh, Mitch Trachtenberg, the seeds that you planted, uh, Harry Hursty, and, and now we have it. And, and what we did in Arizona, which we're hoping other people are going to do uh, in other states, like Maryland is 100% ballot images, the state of Maine, Florida, of all states, 75%. Okay, Arizona, uh, it's 38% because our largest county is Maricopa and there's 60% mm -hmm. of the vote, mm -hmm. the fourth largest county. But anyway, uh, you file a records request, you ask for the ballot images from the last election. They say we don't got them. Well, if they're running an ES and S, DS 200 or 850, or if they're running uh, the Dominion News uh, image scan system by name, it says what it is. Right. Uh, they do. And, the, and what this technology is leading to that, believe it or not, they put it in a cast vote record, which is an Excel spreadsheet. And I have one here. It's 176,000 rows. And it has everything you voted on your ballot. Mm -hmm. And what they didn't give me, because we're fighting over it, the hyperlink to give me your ballot image too, which is anonymous. Mm -hmm. And that ballot image is the way we could verify. And then once you verify, the job's not done. You know, you want to sort it by precinct, take your computer, plug it into your flat screen TV, bring some friends over, and verify. And then you take those ballot images. Well, they all ended up right. Good. Now, randomly pick a few through... Uh, Professor Stark's method with mm -hmm. risk limit audits, which that was a great program. Mm -hmm. It really was mm -hmm. that you broadcast. I learned a lot from him Thank and I'm you. a big admirer of his work is that you go ahead and say, hey, I want to check this against the original. I'm not here to count. I'm here to verify. Right. You can take the ballot image, which has a number that matches the one that they have because it also puts a number on the ballot. So it's an inventory system. So folks can check their ballot from home. Yes, they wow. can if we work it right. Because realistically, mm -hmm. these right. ballot images need to be put online by precinct. Mm -hmm. And people should go ahead and download their precinct, invite some friends over, plug it into the flat screen, and then count. And there's a program out of uh, Wisconsin that you can count a race one per second and use little clickers and you put in teams of two. And there you go. We verified because truly, elections are not any good unless they're verifiable. Anything less than that in my book and our book here is a disaster for our democracy. Absolutely. And John, we've got a lot of work to do to make sure that you at home trust that when you go to the precinct and you cast your ballot that it is going to be counted as cast. And we know in the past election in the Democratic primary, only 9% of registered voters turned out to vote for either Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. And that's disastrous. That is abysmal. Again, we go back to people have fought and died for the right to vote. And here we are in 2016 with 
equipment that cost millions of dollars. States are spending millions of dollars on this equipment and they still cannot inst instill trust in their voters for them to even come out and exercise their most precious right. So Bob, I know that you are very excited about um, these ballot images as well and what that can, um, what that can signal for um, future elections and legislation. Tell us what you're thinking. Well, uh, I'm thinking that uh, if you have systems that can actually uh, be used to audit, uh, you create a system that's accountable. Uh, at this point in history, I mean, the thing that most voters need to think about is we have partisan, for-profit corporations using secret proprietary software to tell you who wins an election. Absolutely undemocratic. It's not transparent. Should not be allowed. You know, people need to think about this. My, my dad was a teamster, teamster union steward. I, I worked one summer for the teamsters myself. In those days, the teamsters were run by the mob. But when, when they stole the ballot, took the ballot box into the back room and counted it, with nobody there to verify it, and came out and said, well, you know, Jimmy the Weasel won, <laughs> got like 89%. People knew they were being cheated. Right. But without these audit systems and these scans, that's exactly what they're doing. It's a black box, it's a thumb drive. They've written the secret software. None of it is verifiable, and it's unacceptable. So we want to make sure that we get these image scans turned on. We want to make sure that there's paper in every machine. You've got places in Pennsylvania and in Georgia where literally there, there's no paper trail. Their recount is to push the computer button again. Right. right. Yeah. We got yeah. another printout. It matches. Yeah. But that uh, instills some trust. Right? Yeah. No. It's, mm. You know, I tell people it, it's faith-based voting. It's not based in reality of an actual mm. image or a record, it's, it's push and pray. You know, you, you push and you pray <laughs> yeah. that it's recorded You correctly. know, we're laughing to keep from crying, folks, because that's exactly what it is. It is tragic that we cannot trust this process in the wealthiest country in the world, where we probably have more lawyers per capita than there are in any other country, and we are still, still, seeing abysmal low voter turnout because people don't trust the process. Bob, John, thank you so much. Thank you. Folks, and Lori, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, folks, once again, we want to remind you about our Election Integrity Conference that's happening this weekend in Richmond, California. We will be registering you. Um, you can buy a ticket at 9.30 in the morning. Um, we will be going live streaming from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you live in the Bay Area, we want you to come out and join us, be a part of this, be an active participant in the election integrity movement. And if you live too far outside of the Bay Area, we want you to join us on live stream. We will be live streaming all day long. You are going to see the election integrity movement in action. You are going to see folks from all over the country who are the movers and shakers in this movement, who are making transparency a reality in their area of the country. They are fighting blood, sweat, and tears just as hard as we fought for Bernie to win the primary. We want to fight to make sure that every ballot is counted its cast in the future. This is what we're asking you to do, folks. And there's something else that's very crucial that we need from you. These lawsuits that we have all over the country, and we counted up before the live stream, we're talking about 11 lawsuits right now that are pushing ROV offices to open up the ballots. We want to verify whether the election was counted as cast. We want to know if we can trust the vote, but we can't tell that because we can't count the ballots. We need your help. It costs money to keep a lawsuit going. If lawsuits don't happen. We don't win lawsuits overnight. Lori Grace organization, trustvote.org. Please go. Please check it out. Check out the work that Lori Grace is doing. She is 
one of the back, part of the backbone of this movement. Check it out. Donate to her site. Five, ten bucks can help us go a long way when we've got a hundred thousand people coming in. All right. We also want you to like our page, Ballots for Bernie. When you like our page, our live stream goes out to not only you but your friends as well. We want to share what we're doing with everyone across the country. We want everybody to know what's happening so that whatever time you've got to offer us, if all you've got time to do is come on once a week and watch our live stream on Sunday, educate yourselves, educate your friends and family on what is the most progressive news coming out of the election integrity um, movement, we want you to do that. We also want you to be a part of the election integrity movement in your area. There's steps to activism. First is educating yourself. Second is getting involved with what's happening in your community. We've got election integrity activists all over the country. Get together with them just like you did with your Bernie folks in your county, in your district. You went out on knocking on doors. You got Bernie blisters on your feet. We want you to put blood, sweat, and tears into this election integrity movement. Folks, together we can do it. Again, thank you all so much for being part of our live stream. If we have any questions, we would love to take them now. Please, I know a lot of you folks are getting in from your work week. Um, you've just gotten in, you're making dinner for the kids. Um, and we're, we're so happy to have you um, viewing our live stream tonight. If there are any questions, we would love to answer them. Um, Addie, have you had any questions that have come in so far? We don't have any questions at the moment, but we do want to share with you Bob Petrakis' book that he co-authored with... Harvey Wasserman. Trip and Flip Selection of 2016. How they targeted the Bernie voters and stripped them of their right to vote. Uh, can never let that happen again. They're using the mega and mega, uh, metadata. They knew exactly who they were and they stripped 125, 126,000 in Brooklyn, and they stripped tens of thousands, who knows how many, including the undervote here. Yes. It makes no sense that a million people would go uh, in a primary Absolutely. to the polls and not vote for the president. So they stripped these voters in Ohio. They went to the college towns, Athens. They stripped them off the rolls or they made them vote provisional or turned them away. And then when it gets really close, the vote appears to be flipped. But we can't look at the source code. It's secret. The source code should be open source. All the images should be public records and there should be a Trackenberg system that runs parallel yes. and verifies all our votes. Let's bring real democracy to America because what we had in Arizona, in New York, in Ohio, but really in California, cannot be qualified as elections. They were coup d'etats. Yes. It was a coup, it was illegal, and let's create a system that we can have faith in. 12 of the 26 elections in the primary, if they weren't in the United States, our government would not count them as a valid election. It would be an illegitimate election because the exit polls indicate that the official numbers do not match up to how people said they voted. Never again, let's get active. Strip and flip election of 2016. Soon to come out with a very small uh, article where everyone now admits it's a shock. Everyone admits what we've been saying for more than a decade. <laughs> the voting machines, <laughs> shockingly, computer voting machines. Who would think computers could be hacked? But everyone's admitting it now, including the New York Times. So our movement has prevailed, and we also have the solutions. Come to the conference. Folks, thanks so much again. And Addie, pan out. Pan out just a little bit. I want to get a shot with all these great folks. John, Bob, 
Lori, thank you so much for being part of this Balance for Bernie live stream. We are overjoyed. Our cup is full to be inviting a whole new generation of election integrity activists to walk forward, march forward with us. We together can make it happen. Many hands make light work. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining in our live stream. We'll see you this weekend. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. folks.